Carter, and please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Are there any additions to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, we are waiting on the commissioner's warrants from the auditor's office, so I'd recommend we hold off on approving the consent agenda until that arrives so you can take a look at those. Uh, beyond that, you can scratch off on item two consent agenda, auditor warrants from 512 of 21. Those were the 511 warrants. It was just a report that I got late, so that can be scratched. So we will have 521 warrants and 525 commissioner's warrants. Uh, other items at 10 a.m., if you would please add Wayne Drew, Building and Ground Supervisor, regarding the Fairgrounds Swine Fencing Project, and that'll be an action item. And I did hand that out on the, your additional packet information there. Next item, uh, at 10.30 after the bid opening, I requested that County Attorney Sandy stay at the meeting and go over the following item, which is the open meeting law, State of Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Chapter 14, HF 820, and get his opinion on that. And then last thing ahead is under uh, other business is to set the employee appreciation grill out for June 29th at the EMS building. We can talk about that. So employee appreciation grill out June 29th EMS building. Mr. Chair, hearing those additions, I'll move the agenda. Okay. I have a second. Okay, moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Nick. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the first item for me today uh, would be uh, to approve a, a culvert order. Um, this is just restocking supplies. Um, we're not getting really low. We wouldn't have needed to order quite yet, but um, we're being told that this is, price is only good to the end of the month and then they're going up. So we want to get them ordered, save a little bit now, I guess. So, so um, I would recommend going with the low bid of True North Steel for $23,123.20. I have moved. Okay. I will second. Okay, any discussion? This is just a drastic difference between those two bids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what Nick's talking about. Yeah, unless the other one is up already. And, you know, this one's just going to, we'll be right there at the end of the month. I, I don't know, but. <laughs> Considering the, the drastic increase, uh, are you stocking up even more? Do you want to order more than what you need for this year? Well, I'm thinking. We could. I don't know if we have. The budget or the physical room? No, it, it'd be the room in our normal shelf. But we could maybe find, just, I don't know, put them in the lawn if we have to, I guess. They don't so. sit outside, obviously. They're oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they can handle the, the elements. Um, yeah, we can, if you think that's the way to go, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, we can uh, look at ordering more. 35. If they're similarly priced and they're available. Go ahead and do it. I would, because you know the price is going to go up. Yeah, and, and actually. Um, I'm surprised you can get them. His I mean, quote the might still is. His quote might be higher if you add on to it. But. Yeah, I, I guess I've never talked to him. The maintenance superintendent's always done that. So, we, yeah, we might find out we can't get any more than this. I don't know. But um, th this is actually, culverts are actually on the auditor's warrant list. But they're only there in case we, like, really need to get them right away. Otherwise, if I have time, I'd always come to the board. So, I, yeah, I don't know if you need to approve a specific number. You know, we can just go ahead and do it if that's what you think we should do, which I think is fine. So. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. We'll order some extras too then, if we can get them. Okay. <laughs> hey, we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? So, do we need to amend this, or are we just going to give him verbal to go ahead and see if he can get I the I think consensus later? would be good because it's already on the list of okay. auditor yeah. warrants. Yeah. Exactly. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to 
same with cutting edges you know they're, they're but they're in my opinion they're only on there in case we need them before a board meeting but one of those deals try to get board approval if you and know, if I remember like this, so. generally these you resell these to townships quite often too don't you yeah and private people I think I don't know the exact number but I would say the majority of them get resold yeah. so you know we get most of that money back anyway mm -hmm. I think oh yep that's even on there so yep so I did look that up at one time but yeah. okay, anything else not all those in favor I opposed motion carries right um next up uh this has changed a little bit since i sent out my agenda items but there's an old steel truss bridge at our landfill i included a picture in the packet but every other year we have somebody that tries to buy it from us but it's not ours it belongs to the dnr um it sounds like they're now willing willing to consider moving it so i don't know what's going to happen with it but it's not ours to sell or whatever so um, if it does get sold or moved or you know, whatever um, just know that it's not us doing it so okay. so I'll, when i know more i'll be back and i'll give you the update but you know. no action needed on that no nope, nope that's just information so. okay, thanks okay. um then the next item I have would be that an update on the bench and the Indian Lakes Trail. Um, we posted online looking for bench donations and got seven calls within an hour, <laughs> which is a lot more than I thought we'd get. But um, we still have five people interested. So I guess my question for the board is, is the county interested in participating anymore with these bench bench? installations if fish and wildlife gives us to go ahead um i don't necessarily need an answer today it's more i think we'd start talking about it today um you know if somebody wanted to donate a bench you know do we do the slab and the install or i don't know just the legwork you know contacting fish and wildlife and getting things approved um, another thing to think about would be and this goes for you know the current bench do we want to specify what kind of bench goes out there we, okay i'm seeing that <laughs> should it match the one that's there now i think i've I was think able so. to track it down so okay. okay one that could view the eagle's nest probably wouldn't be a yeah. bad spot yeah and you know another thing we could do is we could just ask these donors you know where, where would you like to see them and i'll see if we can get them allowed to be put there and right I, I think that'd probably be a reasonable request and um, um so I, I listed the website there I, I think that's the one that's currently out there and it looks to me like it's around fifteen hundred dollars with the plaque on it so so if if you know what what you'd like done i can proceed with that or you know i can take it to the road and bridge committee or the, any other committee you want or if you want to come back in a couple weeks we can talk about it again give everybody time to think about it or i i feel this is pretty straightforward we don't need to micromanage this we can just give you authorization to go ahead and proceed with it uh, okay uh, one possible suggestion is is when you, when you think when you pour the concrete slab for it, it's not going to be that, that that big of an expense for that little piece of concrete uh, yeah, when you do so. pour those, maybe think about making it a little bit bigger so there'd be room for a bicycle rack. So if people are biking, they can park their bike when they sit on the bench or whatever. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I was thinking about making them a little bit bigger so like a wheelchair could park next to the bench. Yep. That was really the only addition I had, but we could. In fact, I don't know if it'd be appropriate. I'd, I'd go ahead and move that we just authorize Nick to go ahead and proceed with this and, and just. Uh, do what he feels his best judgment and in compliance okay. with dnr so if uh if fish and wildlife's okay with it you'd we'd accept and make the slabs and everything for these five i i don't know i want to guess somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars a slab by the time you pour so it and enhance what's already a very beautiful uh, yeah trail. oh yeah mm -hmm. i i have no doubt that it'd be used I, um, every time i'm out there looking at anything it's just multiple cars you know, that i see and Mr. Uh, Chair, um, 
I agree with Dan with pouring a little bit bigger slab too because the one the bench right there at the cemetery I see a lot of times people do lean their bikes right onto the bench okay. to get off and take a drink of water to take a look at something so if there's more room to work maybe somebody will donate a bike rack or yeah. something oh actually too yeah, look at some bike racks and room for it so something to consider so do you want that in the form of a motion or is it yeah. just a matter of his consent just to have Nick proceed with this what, what would you like well we could if you're well especially if you want to add bike racks or something yeah like it that. might get a little bit more than a thousand dollars I was guessing but but it I, I wouldn't think it'd be a whole lot you <coughs> know maybe the, maybe the people that dropped out of the bench would go for a bike rack that's you know? kind of what I'm oh that's a good idea I think that cost should go to a donor yeah so. I don't know how you'd get a plaque or anything on there but I don't know, maybe make those. There's two. probably a way. You put a black probably a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just tell Nick just to go ahead and proceed with it, report back to us as he okay. as he finds stuff. That's fine. Yeah. I think Dan, you did make a motion to I, allow I did make a motion Nick to proceed. Do you want to? So. I'll support okay. it. Okay, we have a motion and support, and that motion is to authorize Nick to go ahead and proceed with this. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, well, I don't know how soon I'll get to it. We're right in the middle of overlays right now, so I think I'd like to handle one thing at a time and, <laughs> and then we'll dive into the rest of it. So. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so well, we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I may, I would really recommend that all the benches be the same. Yes. Yes. And right. use this as your template. The plaques be the same. Just so you have standardization, you're getting it from the same company, and if you need parts, you can do it because I'm pretty sure we're going to be responsible for probably maintaining them in the future, too. So uh, I think it would look a lot better if we did something like that. Right. Very good point. That brings me to one question I forgot to ask here. Um, what do we want for our involvement then? Like, do we want to be responsible for maintenance on these? They actually looked what I would call maintenance free, but thinking about the future, like, well, everything breaks down over time. Like, right. do we want to make the, that's kind of on the donor, or maybe we just say, well, we'll remove it at end of life, and that's going to be the end of our participation? Or, you know, I'm thinking when it falls apart, or are we on the hook for putting well, a new you one think out there? they last? I don't know. They looked like... They looked pretty sturdy. Coated <laughs> steel that's not just going to paint fade and it rusts, and it looked like plastic lumber or whatever, and I think they're going to last a long time myself, but... Right. But I, I, I guess don't. it's no different than any other donation. We're accepting the donation, and, and it is what it is at this point. And, and if 10 years from now, if it deteriorates, we'll have to address it at that point. Okay, so. I'm fine with that too. But I just didn't want to sign us up for something that we didn't want to do. So, All right. <laughs> so okay, well, I'll, we'll just leave that alone for now then. So, okay, we do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, the next thing I have would be that bid opening, but we can't do that until 1030. So, um, yeah, outside of that, I guess um, I don't have anything else for right now. Does anybody have any questions for me? I don't. Did anyone have any questions on the annual report? Oh, I don't know anyone look at it. I didn't, I didn't bring mine with, but no. if you have a question, I can. I, I didn't. Can, I, no, I didn't. You covered my question. Oh, okay. So. Was that done in-house, somebody that, the report? Yeah, yeah, we do that okay. in-house every year, so. Tell them what's nice. It's very nice. Oh, nicely yep. done. Very detailed. Nope. Yes, very nicely done. Nope, she does a good job on it. That's Leslie, our accountant, that does that. Pass so. that on to her. I will do that. Yep. Looking at your cover picture here, too, with the culverts, we talked about other culverts. Uh, I know I probably asked this question before, but it seems that after we uh, instituted that policy of, of charging contractors for chips and dings on the culverts, <laughs> they've been a lot more careful with them, haven't they? Yeah, we haven't had any issues after that. I, I don't know. Their crews changed, too, so possibly you get a couple bad apples to get out of there, but um, we'll see. <laughs> but where is this? Which one is that? Oh, that's right by Holland. That's like a panoramic view, so that's why it looks kind of funky. If you go uh, west of Holland on 8, okay, it's right on the county ditch. Okay. The square one's on the county ditch, and the other one's that big driveway culvert. So, okay. um, 
So yeah, it'd have been standing on the north side of the road. Never see it from that angle, of course. Nope, you don't. That's I had to ask too. I'm like, what is it? I thought it was maybe two merged together, but mm -hmm. no, it's just like the panoramic view and it looked cool. So yeah, thought, oh, let's use that one this year. So seamless, <laughs> seamless photo Photoshop. There. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'll be back at ten thirty. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Nick. Personnel. Thank you. Yeah. Morning. Good morning. Um, I just have one request for the board this morning. Um, I did include in the board packet a building grounds maintenance worker job description and a request for board action. Um, I am looking to have the job description updated, so um, I would need that in a separate motion if you decide to approve the position. Uh, but we are looking at hiring another full-time building grounds maintenance worker, um, which was budgeted for 2021. Um, previously, we did have two, um, and we just eliminated one position and we just feel it's time to bring that um, other position back to take on some of these projects um, around the buildings and just keep up with everyday maintenance. So are you looking for specific authorization then to do we this? We would need authorization since it is technically a new position again because it was eliminated a few years ago. We would need authorization to um, you know, add this position and advertise and hire a full-time building grounds maintenance worker. And then I also need a separate motion just to approve the revised job description. Well, Mr. Chair, I will move that we authorize Kathy to uh, add an additional grounds position. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, how long does it take to get the point this it should not need to be pointed. Oh, it's already. The right. update was minimal. It was like two words, just a special engineer boiler's license. Um, but I kind of wanted to also update the date on the top too. Right. So um, both Wayne and Steve looked over the job description and felt that it was sufficient as written. So we didn't really have much updates. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add that this position is needed. Uh, Wayne and Candy cannot keep up with all the work that needs to be done in all of our facilities, buildings, mowing, that type of thing. We did uh, hire a temporary, uh, basically a lawnmower last year. Uh, that worked out well, but the person is gone now and there's just so many projects going on around here with the fairgrounds, our buildings, family services, EMS, uh, maintain even Southwest Mental Health Building. We have a lot of uh, buildings in our pocket here we need to take care of and it's just not enough for Wayne to do it on his own and candy either and also this will allow wayne to do more planning working with the building and plant committee so we can get projects going and that type of thing and do more of that than just instead of you know, spending most of his time working so uh, out in the field we just need more work that way too so it's that's why i did recommend we put it in the budget last year and i'm glad it went forward and now here's the culmination so that kath can go and get it advertised and hopefully get a good person hired for this no question. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did that include the approval of the job description? Sorry, I just want to make sure that I was all I thought I understood motion. the description was going to be separate. separate. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'll move approval of the job description. Okay. I'll support I'll that. <laughs> Okay, um, any discussion? <clears throat> if not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I had. Okay. All right. Um, you want to recess for a few minutes so we can look these warrants over? Sure. Yes, fine. We are back in session. I guess we could uh, go back to approve the consent agenda. 
minutes, commissioner warrants, auditors warrants, and hospital warrants. Mr. Chair, I move for approval. Okay. I will second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Kyle. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And today I've got Mike Boston with me. Uh, I should have received, hopefully you received it. Um, mm -hmm. But I forgot to get it to Steve right at the time before he got the packet out, so. Um, but anyway, this is a feedlot public meeting for Mike Boston's feedlot located in Eden, section 27, the Southwest Quarter. He's planning to modify its existing facilities, um, going from about 670 enemy units to 745, and I'll let Mike kind of explain a little bit if he's, if he's got any questions. Okay. Yes, it's, it's pretty simple. We are we have some open lots right now, and we're putting a roof over top of these lots. Just slide the mic over. Oh, okay. The there you go. Thank you. That better? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So we are putting a roof over these open lots, to better control water runoff, drainage. Mm -hmm. um, just be as compliant as we can. So you're not adding a square footage of your concrete slab, it's just putting a roof over everything? There's some concrete being added uh, for manure control, uh, stacking slab. Um, that's through some equip engineering to take care of the, the runoff off the, yeah. off the facilities. But the roofs, and uh, that will take care of, that'll control the water more. Yeah. And the roof is going to be over this new stacking slab as well, too, or that's going to be open? That'll be open, yep. So basically, the purple one will be open, and the oh. three, four, and six there. These will be covered. Okay, I don't have purple on mine. Uh, this one, I must. I got this. I one gave you a different one. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good enough. Sorry. Just a comment too. We did go through a variance last Monday night for the setback from the road for a structure of the. the currently, the existing yards are about 45, 50 feet from the center line of the township road. Um, beans that Mike is putting a roof over top it becomes a structure and therefore requires the hundred foot setback from the center line so we went through a variance to allow the structure setback it seemed kind of meaningless but yet if you follow the ordinance by the way it reads that's what was required yeah. and that was approved by the Board of Adjustments last Monday so how many feet of variance did he need then for, for the Approximately setback? 50 feet 50 feet so. right I mean, really, the, the site itself is not going to change. The bunks are still going to be where they're going to be at. Because mm -hmm. um, the walls are there already. Right. Yeah. I drove by there this morning, and I thought it looked pretty nice. But. Thank you. Yeah. I will say Mike goes over and above to stay on top of everything. And the recommendation was to approve it? Yep, it, it meets all the requirements. Um, according to the MPCA rules for feedlots, he's making the improvement to basically have no, he's eliminating any runoff concerns from the site. He's managing the manure better, and it meets all of our requirements, provided that he went through that variance. So everything is fine with the county's ordinance. And no action is required from us. Correct. This 11th Street that runs by here, is that a township or is that a county road? Township. Okay. Yeah, and the township didn't have an opinion about it either way. Nope, they were. They said that everything is working fine. Um, the question came up last Monday of as far as snow concern, and Mike has been addressing taking care of most of all the snow anyway, and the township did not have any concerns with that either. Sounds good. Well, everything looks real good. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with all this. And yeah, good luck, Mike. Well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Keep up the good operation. Thanks. Well, that was, it was kind of a fixer-upper. It's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that you're addressing the challenge, though, not just ignoring it. Uh -huh. it, it, it is, appreciate oh, the, the investment. Yeah. I can remember years ago what this site looked like, and then Mike bought it, and it's been a steady improvement to the good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it okay. looks very well run. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Okay. 
Brock is online. Yep, I've got Mr. Johnson online so we can go ahead and take up the tabled item on the Novell Energy Solar Garden subscription at the Public Service Building. Brock, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thanks for having me. There you are. Good. Glad you could be here. I uh, figured just we'll have you hear that way the, the board could hear it from the horse's mouth instead of mine. So, uh, so just to bring the board back to where we are in this, I understand you, you tabled it last meeting when I was out ill. And so what the, the idea here is, if you remember that we were, we, were, we were pitched the idea of putting up a solar garden out at the, social, or at the family service, public services building. And that was uh, by ideal energy, and that was to put up a 59.04 kilowatt solar field on that. So I did some more investigation on it and found out that we are already currently in a 25-year solar rewards program with our meters out at the public service building. So in doing some more research on that, um, what we have are three and this goes back to when Sharon was here, they did this back in 2017, is that we have three solar gardens we're members of, uh, Capella 5 at 3%, Capella 4 at 1.8, and Aunt Leah at 1.4. And all three of those gardens are in Pipestone County. So when that went into effect. So the, the issue we have with that is we have a 25-year agreement with uh, BHE Solar on these gardens. And for us, and we're only in basically our fifth year basically out of that so we're a long ways from being anywhere near to get out of this agreement without paying uh, penalties and that type of thing to get out of it so the idea was probably not to do a solar garden out there and jeopardize what we're doing now and have to pay penalties to get out so I did I made the approach to Novell Energy we do have an existing relationship with them as they have the solar panel system out at the fairgrounds so I've also met with them. We've seen them at several AMC conferences over the years and met with them. So with given that relationship, I reached out to, to Brock to see if there's something we could do on a subscription if we had any capacity left out at the public services building. And he checked into it with uh, Xcel Energy. I signed forms so he could get our information on it. And we have 25 kilowatts available left of solar that we could subscribe to. So with that, I invited Brock to come online today. I think you're up in the cities, aren't you, Brock? You didn't have to drive down. So and just kind of give the board, and if you give the board a little update, uh, background on Novell and where we're at with this now, I think we can uh, move through this today. I'll turn it over to you, Brock. Sure, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, when, when Steve uh, brought this up about you know putting the on-site solar project there that was proposed, um, I I let him know that XL will allow you to you know go up to 120% of your annual usage, whether that is you know with on-site solar or a subscription to a community solar garden. So what we did is we we looked at um, your XL bills for all of your accounts and went through and matched up your credits from your solar garden subscription to what your usage is to each facility. And that's how we determined that you would have an eligibility of adding another 25 kilowatts at the social services building. Um, and that would, ma that would max you out to the 120% mark at that location. So um, as far as the, the subscription uh, savings opportunity goes, it's a, it's a penny a kilowatt hour fixed discount off the bill credit rate. So 25 kilowatt uh, system, our subscription will produce about 34, 35,000 kilowatt hours for the year. Um, so it would add an additional 340, $350 a year in, in electricity cost savings. Hey, I guess we first need a motion to take the you know, item off the table from our previous meeting. 
Yes. In fact, if I remember right, I was the one that made the motion originally to table this until Steve is back. So yes, I again will move that we take it off the table for rediscussion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we can discuss what we want to do from here. Well, I appreciate that Steve uh, caught this because we would have been in violation of our contract had we proceeded. So thank you, Steve, for being on top of this. Uh, the, the savings is, is being rather minimal, we realize that, but just the same, it's a savings for us. So uh, I guess my only question is, is by entering into this agreement then for this extra 25 KW, does that extend the length of our commitment to Novell, or is this is, is going to be the same length as it was? Um, this, would be a, this would be a new a subscription with Novell, so it'd be a, wouldn't it be a 25 year subscription, Brock, is that correct? Yeah, good question. So you can take advantage of it for the full 25 years, but we have uh, flexible terms in our subscription agreement where any time after 10 years you can get out for whatever reason at no, no penalty. So you're really signing up from, for 10 years from when the garden comes online. And our existing contract with you is, that's about three years old? Now, are we two, three years into the existing? That's that's a five years. It's, we're five years into that one. That's five a whole different uh, agreement since we have a, they put up the solar array at the fairgrounds. It's a whole different agreement than just a subscription. Okay. So we actually pay the difference to them on an annual basis or a monthly basis. We pay Novell for the power purchase agreement on that. This one is just a subscription because we don't have any panels. It's right. not here. It's not ours. So. This is no different than the agreements we have now with BHE for all of our meters on virtually all of our buildings right now. So we end up paying, we pay BHE monthly for our uh, electricity. And then at the end of the year, we get a rebate check from XL Energy. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Every April we get a check back. And the courthouse one, last time we had was $48,000. So and based on the same one cent per kilowatt hour is what the agreements are and it's that that one cent is is what i'm mulling over is because it's, it's such a minimal return it on is, this yeah. do we want to commit ourselves to 10-year contract for such a minimal return is, is my question well again it's only it's on the public service building it's 300 uh, 340 350 dollars a year we get back on the electricity costs at the building mm -hmm. so, but if we didn't we already this, have one now on it we have we have three solar agreements on there right now, so it would be just maxing it out is all we're doing. Or we can we can do nothing. I mean, that's fine too. Uh, the whole idea of this was, uh, issue one was the agreements we already have and putting up the ideal solar out there, plus the land it takes to do it, changing everything over and all that. And also we didn't want to do that. No, no, I based agree. Based on the cost, no. you know, that we're gonna get out of it. So the idea with this is just, we have some additional capacity available. We could sign up for a solar garden and recoup 300, $350 a year and raise our, our monthly costs to Excel. So. Any savings sounds good. You're gonna pay the bill anyway. The only thing, this solar garden, these are not in the county. Brock, this one is in Cottonwood County, isn't it? I believe we talked about, does that sound right? So we do have one. The, yeah, we do have, and the rules are you can subscribe any in your county or an adjacent county. Um, so we've got a lot in the area, but we do have one right in town that is right by that building that's scheduled to come online here in about the next month. Oh, so we do have enough space available that you would be, be able to get into that one. So we could subscribe right to the one that's actually right next to the building that the city put up, is what he's saying. Correct. Okay. Correct. Why not? I guess I'd move for approval. I would second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Brock. And Brock, I also have our auditor treasurer in here too, and I know we need to work out uh, the details on, on getting that paid. We don't have the ability to um, authorize a direct withdrawal out of our accounts through the county and if we can work that out where we can send a 
a check for it monthly or quarterly or however you guys want to do it. We want to make sure we do it that way. And Tyler is here if you uh, have any questions of him or Tyler, do you have any questions either? Not really. I mean, I guess I'll just indicate that it's something that we're looking into maybe here shortly, um, implementing maybe doing some ACH payments. It's just getting it all worked out, having some payments as ACH and some as solid check because not everybody takes it. So I love that one. I'll have a lot of times to do it first. Um, but it is something that we're looking into as of right now. We have the, you can pay it by auto warrant. If they want to do a special auto yeah. warrant, that's not a problem. Um, we just need the authorization to do it. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you if you want to have a um, follow up call uh, with us on that, Steve, we can certainly do that. Okay, that sounds good, Brock. I'll I'll give you a call when we get done here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for being part of the meeting day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank have you. Good day. Two. Okay, um, uh, give us the update on the uh, Federal American Rescue Plan. Tyler informed me we did receive our first payment last week of $886,000, and that has been put into a separate account for the American Rescue Plan not to be convoluted into any of the other rescue plans we've been working on so that's in its own um, the the positive side of this just going forward is we don't have to make any snap decisions about doing this we have until December 31st of 24 to have our projects ready and if there are any major project I have learned that as long as the project is encumbered and in some places there'll be some probably huge infrastructure bills, not necessarily here, but in some counties and cities that you have until December 31st of 26 to actually pay those bills on, on, on large infrastructure projects. So the, the government is really trying to do a good job of trying to spread this out and not trying to condense this like we've done with the other ones and how fast we had to do it. There has been no shortage of information coming out and unfortunately the information is still somewhat vague. Um, it's like every week there's a, a webinar. Today there's another one at noon put on by the um, by NACO. Last week there was one put on by the League of Minnesota Cities that I attended as well. Before that there was one the week before from AMC, and before that there's some private ones. So there's there's lots of information coming, and I think the biggest thing to remember is we should take our time, really sit down as you as the board members, our our committee and even start talking to the public and seeing what we want to do with this and how we can best utilize you know this 1.7 million dollars that the county is going to receive in the next uh, year that'll be here so it really get the best bang for the buck uh, the information out there is is still um, is response to the public health emergency addressing negative economic inputs uh, serving the hardest hit uh, people who were affected the most and improving access to in infrastructure those are the big four items that the government really wants us to focus on um, we can replace revenue losses if we've had lost revenue if we can calculate that out we can we can do that um, there are necessary investments we can do concerning water sewer and the big one is broadband as far as water goes the only the water issues we have would be through rural water and that's a possibility if there were needs by, say, Lincoln Pipestone Rural Water that we could partner with. That might be an idea, something they may need. Uh, broadband, we have at least four different providers in the county providing rural broadband and combining possibly our dollars with township dollars and possibly maybe getting some more miles of fiber installed so that they could get it to more residences and actually get the speeds up if possible too so those are just a few things on on uh, they're thinking about here obviously we have the money so this the swift id we had that all worked out um, other funding possibilities are out there 
Uh, some counties are very involved in housing. Pipestone County, not so much in that. Larger counties are having EDAs, county housing authorities, and things like that. That's not to say we couldn't partner with the city to do something regarding housing as well. We can do small business assistance again like we've done before. Uh, some counties and cities are talking about individual assistance, much like the federal government did with the stimulus checks that we all received as well, too. So I will uh, get out a bunch of information to you. I've got some 40 or 60 different things in a frequently asked questions. But I think the biggest thing now for the board to start thinking about is just get some ideas in your mind what you think or what you're hearing from your constituents on what we can use this money for. And again, we don't have to be in a, in a big rush to get this all spent. If there's needs that we see right now that are important and that are maybe you know more priority, certainly the, we can work on those and get those out too if we want to do another business stimulus, that type of thing. Um, there are other programs out there that are being covered by the, by the federal government. So we should not get uh, uh, moving into dealing with uh, fiscal funds for the schools, Health and Human Services, FEMA, and Transit. Those are all pass-through monies coming from the feds to the state. So it's a little different. In one of our grants, we did give money to the schools. So there's a very large ESSER grant that the schools are getting out of this. Health and Human Services are getting their own pot of money through the feds to the state as well. So there's going to be a lot of money. So we don't want to duplicate those things either, uh, biggest things. And also FEMA money and also transit are getting their money from the state as well. Um, the state is getting about $2.833 billion on this. Uh, and counties are getting of that $1.1 billion. Uh, there are 21 cities that got their own money, totaling $644 million. And the rest of the other cities and towns and townships which uh, all of our others in Pipestone County fall under, they get, they're sharing 377 million. And those cities and townships need to apply to MMB, Minnesota Management Budget, to get their money. So once they get the money, it sounds like their money will show up sometime in June if they apply to it. So the small cities and townships would need to apply. And the approximate dollar amounts, I did mention it one other time, the city of Pipestone will get approximately 460000 Edgerton will get approximately 130000 Jasper approximately 60000 Holland 20, Ruthton 30, Trosky, Island, and Hatfield all 10. And then the townships are all getting 12 townships, the majority of them are getting 20000 at Altona. Uh, Grange, Gray, Burke, Fountain Prairie, and Rock are all getting 20. Some of the bigger population townships like Eden, they get 30. Osborne gets 30. Sweet, 40. And Troy, 30 as well. When do they have to apply by? Uh, they can start applying now. Hey, is there a deadline or? No, we just need to get it going. Okay. The, if the, the wait, longer they wait to apply, that the longer it takes to get the money. But that's all coming through MMB and they won't send the money out until at least the middle of June. So um, there is a, a clause in there that says if, the, if small units of government don't want to use it, they can in turn get it to the county and we could utilize their money to build a nest egg for other larger projects too. So <coughs> we could partner with some of the townships on some broadband possibilities too. I mean, that's a possibility there too. So uh, MMB on their talk last week did say that they could uh, turn their money back to the county to be used. The last thing you want to see happen is they turn it back to the state, which is going to go back to the Treasury and the federal government, and it'll be gone forever. So mm -hmm. it will never get used if it goes back. So we'd want to encourage the townships and small cities to either use the money themselves or get it to us, and then we'll keep track of it. Uh, obviously, this will be just like the first grant we had. This will fall under the single audit requirement because it's greater than $750,000. So uh, actually the auditors are here right now working with Tyler, so they'll be working on the first round of grant that we did back in 20. So that'll be a requirement too, just because we're getting so much on our own. But we'd have to track the money, say if some one of the townships gave us their 20,000, we'd obviously record that we got the 20,000 from them and used it for what project it would be, what we want to do with it. It just doesn't go into the big pot. We want to use it for something. Would Trotsky's uh, sewer project qualify for this type of money? 
that's called water sewer infrastructure you know Trotsky itself would be getting ten thousand dollars it certainly it would help it all helps yeah. absolutely yes, what was the could. number that you mentioned right away that dropped into our account Did we got some money? 886 thousand we got that already yes yeah. came in last week did Trotsky ever get funding for their project they're doing some surveying and stuff now and i think they're still applying for grants and again they it was not on the last grant it was time. a multi-million dollar thing wasn't it well yeah it's too much money for them to afford right actually. oh yeah but they do have a plan finally and a spot to put the lagoon so that was holding their back for a long time right Mr. Chair, Steve, mm -hmm. you had mentioned broadband. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about broadband before, but I think some of the other points are applicable there as well, too. We don't know what's going to happen with broadband as far as federal money, what other monies might be coming for that. We all know there's there's a need there, but it's, it's so difficult when you're dealing with both privately owned utility companies and public money. How, how do we go about that? How do we do that? And guys, refresh my memory, uh, when we worked then with Woodstock Telephone years ago, we, I think we just signed a letter of support, didn't we, for their grant proposal. Right. Yeah. And they got a large grant and from the feds. they got a large grant. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And they put in money of their own as well. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yep. So how, how we could utilize some of this money for support of that I, is complex. I, I, yeah. I think the first broad brush look at it, we would have to come up with a grant agreement with the providers of it, similar to the grant agreements we came up with when we gave private businesses money. Yeah. You know, that there are rules they had to follow and requirements, that type of thing. So it's going to be a little more, obviously more complex, but that would be, you know, a way to do it. That would be, you know, we'd be a grantor, they'd be a grantee of the dollars that we have to do the work. Uh, but. The state has earmarked 70 million for it. The federal government is passing through millions and millions of dollars for broadband too, nationwide. Mm -hmm. Issues you first think about is where is all the fiber coming from to yeah. do the projects? Where is all the infrastructure, the equipment? Where is that going to be? If everybody's doing it in the same compressed timeline of the next three years, yeah. you know, I asked Bill Folger about it. Bill, where do we get our fiber from? He says it all comes from Korea, from South Korea. So it's. I don't even know that we're making fiber in the United States. So, but if everybody's doing it, that's going to put a strain on the on the supply of right. the fiber and the equipment to do it too. So, you know, adding I mean, the kind of getting it done to different things. You, know, you look at the number of different providers that we have in our county. Uh, so, how do we support one internet provider over another? And maybe you wouldn't have to with this money. Maybe you could tap some of that either state or federal mm -hmm. funds direct for broadband right. and use this money for something else. Mm -hmm. So I guess in, in just in closing, I think it's just incumbent of all of us to do homework, listen to your constituents, talk to them. Uh, we get together and, and talk more about what, come up with a list of things we want to do and what we think we can work on. Mm -hmm. Do the cities have to request this too? Yes. Like the townships? Yes. Townships and cities would have to request their money from the state. Okay. Cities of all size? No, not all size. There are uh, 21 cities that are, Big enough I don't remember their, their population, own. but like your bigger cities, there are 21 that got their money directly from the feds, and that was $644 million. Okay. But smaller cities based on population. And one interesting little factoid that the League of Minnesota said, so he said that there's an average of about 104 to 105 dollars per capita of dollars going out to the non-entitlement groups, which are your small cities, your townships. So that's a federal money. That's a lot of money being passed through on a per capita basis to our little towns and townships. I mean, you know, probably unheard of that have gotten that, that amount of money in any period of time. You know, tr coming down, trickle down. So that's, you know, something. I thought that was interesting to share. That it's actually a pretty good do dollar amount going to the cities. In the big scheme of things, at the cost of everything nowadays, you still can't do that much with it. I know, right? <laughs> Correct. So. Somebody's cutting a fat hog. Mm -hmm. so. 
So that's my update for today. I'm not expecting anything. It's just information. I'll continue to learn more. And as I see things uh, for the board members, I'll encourage you to take in these webinars and things like that to, to see what's going on as well and learn all you can. AMC is very good about keeping information flowing to all of us as well. So everyone gets the AMC information. So we have that available too. So we can start actually start trying to just think about things. And maybe at some point we want to have a, a public meeting on it. And invite the public in and see what they're thinking about. Hear from the people. You know. Good. Something like that. Think about that as well. <coughs> That's all I hit on that, Mr. Chairman, right now. Weighing around? Yep. You should be here shortly. Yeah. He was just in here, wasn't he? His phone rang. He took a call. <laughs> What about the flagpoles? Oh, I can do that one. That won't take long. Um, <clears throat> I did re put a request for board action in on, on this and requesting the board approve the donation and installation of three flagpoles and flags for the Veterans Memorial Park <laughs> northeast of Pipestone on Highway 23. Um, background is I was approached by uh, Mr. Tim Topman from TNT Repair and he contacted a group of businesses and found that they would really like to do some things for the, the, the little park out there, the Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, Tim does have a, a little farm just a little bit northeast of there, and I know Wayne talked last meeting that he is offered at no charge the county to do mowing and stick pickup and all that type of things, and it's uh, really starting to, he's done that. He even wants to go get the sign repainted at his cost and do those types of donations for the county that's out there. So he approached uh, the Sons of the American Legion, uh, Much Construction, Hank's Food, and Buffalo Ridge Concrete, and, and solicited donations for three five-inch heavy-duty flag poles, one 25-foot high, one is 20, and the poles and flags would be installed at Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, Tim's the leader of it. All working materials are donated. The location of the poles is gonna be just southeast of the shelter near the light that's out there so we're thinking there will be enough light from the the lighting that's out there it's a led light we've had that switched out last year by jars electric and had to rewire everything out there because everything was shot so we yeah. put that out there um, so i got his copy of his insurance liability so we've got that covered anyway and there's really there's no cost to the county at this point uh, we will take ownership of the flagpoles i'll make sure those are listed as property in the open and I did mention this is a very nice, generous donation to the county by a group of uh, businesses and people to do a nice project like that. And again, it's being mowed regularly and picked up by volunteers. Uh, Wayne had rug and book out there last year and trimmed the trees from the ice storms in 19 and 20. They were looking pretty ratty out there, so those are looking good now. And we also did purchase a new picnic table through the park budget to put out there to replace the wooden ones that are basically to the point of firewood right now. Mm -hmm. So so we figured let's make it look a little nicer, get it nice looking, and it's, like, it's a great idea to have uh, this group do that. So the request I'd have is authorize this group, uh, have the county re receive the donation, and authorize <coughs> that group to go ahead and install the flagpoles and the flags for the county. So Chair, I move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Just can't comment enough on how generous this is for it's everyone. To very nice. Yeah, extend our thanks to all those people involved because it's a, yeah very absolutely well certainly well wonderful project. Not uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you for that. I'll get a hold of Tim and let him know. Appreciate it. Good, uh, Wayne. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I got the the bid for the gates for the hog barn, and that is part of that uh, agriculture grant. And uh, the bid come in at um, eight thousand one hundred and twenty-seven dollars and four cents, and the agriculture grant will cover $7,071 of that yet. County's share will be about 1050 some, right around there. And we just measured this up, so this is a, this is an up-to-date bid, so right here. 
that I just we just measured them. Probably he got back at this so. And these gates will be most of them will be mounted to the poles. Like on the west side of the barn, there's um, hog panels there now and steel posts, so don't look good. These will get mounted between the poles. And everything will be mounted, so it'll look really nice. We're going to do mainly one half of it in the outside and for this year. And then we'll see once it might finish the next year if the grant comes through again. Sure. Yeah. Wayne, what was the total cost of the grant again? Um, 11000 For the project. This project for from these guys was 8000 How much again? 8127.04. Is that on the back page somewhere? Yes. From the back. Have that page. I have that and that. Oh no. Is there another page? Yeah. Oh okay. So read it off you again. You didn't get that. No, I didn't get that. It's eight thousand one hundred twenty-seven point oh four. I didn't print both sides then. Eighty-one twenty-seven oh four, and the ag grant covers seven thousand seventy-one. Yes. Okay. Yep. Everybody got that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what's about thousand sixty dollars the county is <coughs> putting in. That's kind of the diagram that mm -hmm. drew up. Yeah, that would be a nice change. It'll it'll look really nice in there. Mm -hmm. I'd move for approval. I'll support that. Okay, that motion and support. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All right. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Yep. Good luck. Thanks. Yep. Uh, first quarter budget report. All right. Board members, you have a. I did run a copy of the first quarter expenses for you. That was in your packet. I didn't print out a full. Uh, line item of the 110 pages of every individual expenditure. If you want that, I'll be glad to make that for you. But I did put out the first quarter expense report. Uh, virtually, if you look through there, the only things I'll bring your attention to is the is 283, the county ambulance. The reason that is at 149% of expenses is the new ambulance was purchased out of the 21 budget and auditor's office needs to transfer the money from our account for the ambulance to replenish that. So there's virtually most of the money's already there already. So it's just a matter, there were 75 budgeted for 21 and there was 150,000 in reserves for that. So that's the biggest thing there. Uh, most everything is under budget. Things are looking very well in this for the first part of the year. So. First quarter, you don't see a whole lot in there at this point. This tends to come up good, but virtually all the other departments are in their 20s and low 30% of where they should be in their budgets. So again, very pleased where everything is at for for the first quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. Sorry it was late getting to me. Usually I like to get this in April, but due to staff changes in the auditor's office, it's right. a little bit um, difficult to get things going as they're learning new processes and that type of thing. So. Got it as quick as I could. Where are we at with uh, filling that position? Or I'll let, turn that over to Kathy. Uh, it closes this week, so we have nine applications right now. Good. And um, we'll be interviewing hopefully next week or the following week. Mostly by the end of June, we'll have some pretty well qualified choices. Um, I haven't looked at one. Good. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd request a motion to accept the budget report. Okay. So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, it looks like we can recess till 1030. Sounds good.
Okay, we're live. Hey, we uh, can resume and uh, we'll go to our county attorney to give us an update on this open meeting law change <laughs> or update or whatever it is. So what specifically is your Tape. What specifically is your question, Luke? I guess my question is, um, I understand the part about if you're in a non-public location, you're limited to three times, and it really only applies to people that are in the military or in a pandemic or health crisis or whatever. But do people have the ability, based on what's above that, to still do an online meeting? Um, you know, from a public location where it's noticed and is that still acceptable whether it is a board meeting or a committee meeting or whatever um, and is there a limit or it doesn't really say the way I read I read this subpart a of subdivision one mm -hmm. um, you know gives you the ability and it just it's pretty simple seen and heard and open to the public those three simple requirements so if any one of you would want to attend by itv um you got to be seen and heard and wherever you're at has to be open to the public you know if it's in your own house unfortunately if you close the door and won't let the public in you're not going to satisfy the requirement um, if you go stand out in the street with your computer in front of you you're out in the public you'll meet the requirements. Um, I don't think most of you'd want to do that. You still want to do the, uh, you know, have the formality of a meeting, but you got to be in a public place. Does it have to be noticed? Um, that where you're at? I didn't see that in here. I, I didn't mean, either. The normal hearing is going to be noticed. Where you're participating from does not have to be noticed. Okay. It just um, has to be public. So, and your vote would still count? You would still be counted toward a quorum? Absolutely. Okay. Um, is there any limit to how often you could do this? Um, as long as the uh, as long as any of you are in a public place, there was no limitation in here. The non-public aspect of it had a limitation. Correct. You know that was the three. Yes. But there's nothing in here that says you can only do it so many times a year. It looks like if it would be or if for any reason you don't want to attend this session or a committee meeting and you want to do it remotely, you can do it any every time, all year long, without an issue, as long as seen heard in public okay and yeah this would apply whether it's our regular meeting or a committee meeting wouldn't matter hospital board meeting anything yeah. okay this when does this take effect july 1st yeah. <coughs> and that's contingent on on the lifting of the of the uh, governor's so. this has already been passed in statute you know without reading further into this i doubt that there's a contingency you know this is just they're they're the legislature is dealing with the reality of the times. Mm -hmm. We are seeing so much ITV, um, so many Zoom hearings, meetings. Um, it's phenomenal. And so they're recognizing that the world is probably going to trend to that. You know, open court sessions may be held now by Zoom. They're going to do that. They're mm -hmm. going to allow it because I think it's, it's more practical um, based on the fact that judges can see more people and public defenders don't have to travel. They love it. They're not, they don't have all that wheel time. Yeah. So I, I think more rudimentary hearings, we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of sitting in the office, appearing by Zoom. Mm -hmm. yeah, and what this statute does, it recognizes that this is the new reality. Yeah, I just thought, you know, <coughs> from a practical standpoint, uh, I mean, for some meetings, if you're going to have an hour or two meeting uh, three or four hours away, it's awfully convenient to just want to jump on the computer, do it, and yes. save the all-day driving. Absolutely. I mean, like, uh, the, I mean, some of you probably traveled to Redwood for various meetings, huh? you know, a, a part of the district. And as long as you're, you know, I mean, if you'd come here and sit down here with your computer and you can, you're seen, heard. And that's what I should, do. You should be allowed to attend that hearing. There's no problem with it. Right. Because, yeah, all my meeting. Zoom meetings I do right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. It would save you a lot of wheel time again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess that answered my questions. Did anyone else have any? That answered everything for me. Thank you. So it will really limit somebody that would be like trying to attend a Zoom meeting for a board meeting in their car while driving someplace else or 
being on vacation. <coughs> Who does that? Yeah, their car or <laughs> home. Yeah. I mean, after July 1st, I mean, obviously that's not a public place. Your car is not or your, your motel room where you're on vacation to attend the meeting. You're going to see people playing with the term public a little bit, I I'm think. Sure. Um, you know, if you're, if you're sitting in your vehicle and you're in a parking lot and the windows are open, are you private or public? Public. That's the question. Yeah. Well, I know at a meeting yesterday, a commissioner from a nearby county had asked, well, um, if I am willing to notice it and I'm in my home and I'm willing to let the public come in, is that okay? And at least MCIT told them, well, I guess so, if you're willing to. If you notice that I'm, I'm at my house, come on in. Right. You know, that would be a little bit different, but I don't think most of you don't want to do a notice to say, here's where I'm going to be. Right, I would not, but no. yeah, apparently some might. Mm -hmm. How about the requirement for roll call vote? It, it has to be done, according to this, when, when you've got people appearing remotely. So when Dan, when Dan was appearing remotely, we never did any roll call votes? This law was not in effect yet. Okay. So it will be coming up? It will be coming up. So if there is a remote appearance by any of you, just keep it in mind, and Steve will keep it in mind, roll call it. Yep. Yep. So basically everyone got a pass prior to July 1st just because of the vast number of I mean, you still had to have recorded votes, obviously, but I mean, as far as the number of appearances and all that. Yeah, you were just you were just going off the absence of a specific law to deal with the situation and handling business as normal under the law that did apply, which was the general open meeting law, the voting requirements, and the recording of it. Yeah. But that was only allowed because of the emergency situation with the pandemic, because prior to the pandemic, we had very similar rules like this mm -hmm. that, you, that you could not call in remotely you had to physically be present at a meeting there was nothing new about this at all no I mean you just you're dealing with the change of circumstances and the situation of life yeah so that's why there's been the exception this last year and a half yeah the law was adapting yeah, yeah. cut that out <laughs> <laughs> if you can find a way to stop the law from adapting <laughs> good luck to you well thank you for that um, Yes, Nick, we can go on to the bid opening. <coughs> you want to go over there again just to keep track of it, or are we going to share the things? Or we want to add. I'll come over. All right. This is the bid opening for our uh, box culverts in the Edgerton area. Um, we have County Road 18 and County Road 2. Uh, so with that being said, we'll get rolling here. Um, we have three bids. First one is from ANC Excavating out of Marshall. $967,323.40. Next bid is of Midwest Contracting out of Marshall. Their bid, 
$931 even, so $1,016,931 even. <coughs> and the last bid is RNG Construction out of Marshall. Their bid is $913,727.25. Um, engineer's estimate for this project was $989,942.50. $989,942.50. That's all the bids. We will uh, take these back and review the math on them, and I'll be back to you shortly. All the bonds are good. Okay, all the bonds are good, so that's good. We can recess till they return. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we're live. Hey, we can reconvene. All right, uh, so there's one minor correction to the bids as read. Um, RNG construction is actually $913,727.75, not $0.25. Cents. 50 so cents, huh? Went up 50 <laughs> cents, but I'm still going to recommend we go with them as low bid. So. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept that bid. Yep, and I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank all you. Right. Yep. When do you plan on starting the project? I haven't heard yet. <coughs> that one they have, uh, they don't have to start it. And it's got to be done next fall. Yep. Give them a wider window, so hopefully we get, get a little better price on it. So, so they can start that after, what, August? 15th. It's August 1st now. It's August 1st. Yeah. Or July 31st, whatever. Because of Topeka, Topeka Shiner, is this a? Yeah, we're pretty much Shiner territory yeah. everywhere except a little bit up by Ruth then. So yeah. kind of get used to having that all the time. Down and here. 24, that gets an overlay? Is that what you said? Yeah, I think it's scheduled for 24. Um, generally, I like to. Let it settle? Yeah, I let them settle out for a winter or so. Um, it's kind of a pain putting up with the gravel patches, but you know, in the end, I think it's worth doing. Seems like you get a better ultimate project product. So thank you. Yep. Okay, and then uh, apparently on June 29th, we're going to have the employee recognition grill out. Perfect. Looking forward to it. What do we bring for that? What's that? Sorry. What we bring for that money. Just yep. money? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and a body? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get to do all the grilling and stuff, and I get to go do all the shopping, and I do just have you guys split the bill five ways. The grills are there. About yeah. 11. The grills are there. What's that? About 11 or what? Uh, yeah. 10, 30, 11 o'clock. 30. Yeah. 10, 30, 11 o'clock is fine. Okay. Get going. So a lot of people start to show up, I'm sure, by... Generally, we've done it meal time, eleven thirty to one thirty. If I remember right, Kathy, it's like a couple hours. By the time you get the grills hot and the first batch done, eleven thirty to one. Right. I know once it's hot, it doesn't seem to. We'll take stay open long later if we need that. to. No. <laughs> <coughs> Menu will be. Uh, we'll do burgers and brats again, and we have all the leftover brats from the EMS feed. So they share that since that was a, a community supper for the entire community. Yeah. The budget bought that, so we'll turn around and use that because it was already purchased. So they we'll were, share it with us. We got I chips and brats and buns from. I'm sorry, Dallas. They were good. I know. Yeah, that. the brats were great. That brats came from DNTs. They were good. So the smoked brats, hamburgers, chips, sodas, that type of stuff, ice cream treats, potato salad, all the good stuff. Way the more good stuff. The more burgers you fry, the faster you cook because you're getting more grease to burn. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, anything else to uh, come up today? Nothing else at this time, Mr. Chair. Just a small note on the fair board. They had a meeting again last night and things are moving along well. So Good. Got the band booked. Are they going to have advanced ticket sales then? Or? That was a long discussion last night whether it's worth it while doing advances and who. Thanks, Nick. I checked with Edgerton how they uh, handle the tickets for hairball, and there's a company called Tempo Ticket that you can, uh, they'll take the money and all that, and they send you a reader for the gate, so you can read the, on your phone or if they print them out. So it sounds like a, a secure way to go. So it's called Tempo Ticket? Tempo Ticket. Tempo Ticket. Hmm. And if it's a fee on there, it's above the cost of the ticket, so we don't lose any money on it. If it's twenty dollars to get in, it's twenty dollars and two cent, two dollar, twenty-two maybe if it's mm -hmm. for the fees. Mm -hmm. So, but the name of the band is public now, or that's until a contract signed. That's not public. Contract signed and all back already. So, I think they announced it, didn't they, over KLH? Yeah. So Snake Oil. Snake Oil. Is the name Snake Oil. Of the band. So it, you can broadcast that. You did check them out on YouTube. And <clears throat> Check out their show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't look too bad. So we could tell you, so we could sell you a ticket, Luke. Sounded good. Yeah, we could sell you a ticket. Probably. Okay, yeah. that's good. Ozzy, Pat Benatar, Hart. <laughs> I was amazed that the female really looks like a young Pat Benatar. <laughs> Amazing resemblance, <clears throat> actually. We had a chance to have an opening act too, but uh, the guys didn't go for that. Mm. Her name was Caitlin Clark. She's a seventeen-year-old. Country Western, that's what they were worried about, that she wouldn't fit into the people that come to the second one. So, But she's an up-and-comer. But Well, years ago they had Faith Hill when she was an up-and-comer, and then all of a sudden she was the new artist of the year, <laughs> yep. and she still honored her contract and came back a second time. So This gal might end up the same. Too. Didn't it rain then? That yeah, you never know. You never know. But then we went through the whole rain insurance thing too last night. So things are happening. Good. I move for adjournment. Okay. Well, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, motion carries. See you next time. The uh, Performing Arts Center has got that ticket program as well too.